Hey everyone, Coach Lori here with another episode of Conversations with Courageous Cancer Warriors. Today we have the honor of speaking with Roma Bajaj Kohli. She is a life coach and a motivational speaker. Um, and she has this amazing program um, called the Awakened Mind Method that I'm really excited to hear about today. Roma, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lori, for having me. It's truly my honor. I am so excited to hear about you and um, what got you to become a life coach and what you're doing in your work. And um, rumor has it you're also going to be published in a book. So why don't we get started? Let's talk about um, how did you get to where you are today? Um, so it's a, it's a long twisted tale of uh, a confused preneur. I started my journey as I coined myself the term as a confused preneur, because I remember eight years back when I came to United States, I had lived in five other countries before that. And this was really an expedition based on my husband's career, wherever his job took him, I went with him. So my, in my former life, I was a fashion apparel designer and have worked in the fashion industry for 12 years. Before I came to New York City, I was teaching back in India in a college. And when I came here, I knew that I was coming on a dependent work visa. So I didn't have any, you know, authority to work here and it was it was kind of a challenging time for me because at that time I had already conceived my I have I was already a mother with for a two, two year old and it was a little bit uh, unnerving situation but we as a family were missing being with my husband so much that we wanted to come back and you know join together so I made that decision. It was a very conscious decision of moving here. But I sometimes, you know, even though you are aware of the decisions you are making, you do not realize the intensity of the turmoil or the, you know, the, the emotions that you are going to have to deal with once you are in that situation. So those first, the first year was the hardest for me to embrace and accept that, oh, okay, now I don't have an identity of where I work and what I do. I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom. And I might be that for I don't know when. So I came up with a plan to study further. And you know, we were thinking, oh, my son is too small though I really wanted a second child, but I never really thought it would come sooner than later. So I decided, okay, maybe for two years, I'm gonna study for an MBA in fashion communication and design um, because I really wanted to grow in terms of my career wise as well. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, you know, it's a good thing that I don't have a work visa. But as, as soon as I gave my first, you know, entrance for my, for the entrance for MBA, the GMAT, I. I had an anxiety attack then, then, and my scores were not so good. I didn't clear that test. And my husband was like, why don't you just do a pregnancy test? And I'm like, why would I do that? Because you know, I don't want, we are not planning for a child. And maybe this is an anxiety attack. And he's like, you've never had an anxiety attack before and you're throwing up and what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know, but he's like, okay, just do a pregnancy test just for us to be sure. And I was like, no, let's just go to a doctor. Maybe I have an anxiety attack because I wanted to live in denial of the fact that yeah. this is not happening. This cannot happen to me. But somewhere deep down inside, my intuition told me, what if he's right? Right. And then that's what happened. We did the test. It was very early you know, on in my pregnancy, but still the test came positive. And that was it for me. I felt like the world has come crashing down and I didn't know what else to do with me. And I, there was a huge part of me through my past, you know, life experiences, etc. My emotions were rising and were making me feel like this is it. You, you won't know what to do with yourself in your life. And I remember in that moment, um, you know, my, I, I was, I had spoken to my mom and she was going to meet some, some tarot reader. And I told her back in India and I told her that mom, when you go, can you please ask her how, you know, if I'm going to study, what am I going to do next? How is my education going to go? Am I going to get the college I've been waiting for? And I was very excited for the new life I was, you know, I was thinking I was creating for me. And, um, my mom went there and that night she called me and she was like, I had a talk with her and I'm sorry, but she said that you are not studying for your 
MBA and you are actually going to give birth to a baby girl very soon. Oh. And that was it because for me, I was really wanting to have a baby girl because my first was a boy. And I was like, oh my God, like I even had thoughts of not having this pregnancy and still going ahead with my, uh, with my career. But when she said that, it changed everything for me. Of course, you know, I chose my, my child over my MBA and just having two children, then taking a loan for an MBA was way too much of a pressure on a young family who was just starting their life in, in a new country. So I kind of let go of my, you know, my ambitions, but I didn't, you know, that's the thing that I feel that was one of my biggest ahas, but it could have been my epiphany, but I didn't realize that sometimes when we let go, we invite so much more room for so much more to happen in life. Because ever since then, the birth of my daughter made me become more and more, you know, clear that I wanted to become my own boss. I wanted to do things my own way. And I realized in that moment that even though I'm making, it feels like I'm making a sacrifice for my family and giving birth to a child, you know, with, through my body, etc. But somewhere deep down inside, I was being guided by the divine to really go and search for me. So all these years, I felt like I was going after a career. I was going after entrepreneurship. I was going after becoming a boss of myself. But what I didn't realize that my whole journey since my daughter was born, she's seven today, these last seven years have actually made me become in more and more in alignment with my truth with my higher self with the best version of me and how has that happened is because i have learned to embrace the chaos that life was offering to me and i have learned to say yes to life in every given moment from then on so i said yes for my daughter but yet that allowed me to say no to my mba and then after that every situation that life put me you know i started going to a network i joined a networking event because my husband's boss's wife recommended me to one and i was like but i don't even have a business are you sure i can come and she's like yeah please like just come it's a women's empowerment organization and i was wondering like what are these people going to empower me on when i don't even know what i want in life and but i still kept going and that was the time i coined the term the confused preneur and it took me literally five years of figuring out you know i became a serial entrepreneur i hopped from one business opportunity to another and i tried to do everything in life until i realized that you know, when I went to an ashram in India where I was doing a residential training and coaching course in the lifestyle of yoga, I realized in that moment that this is it. All that I was looking for on the outside was actually in here within me. But I didn't even take that moment to trust myself, to accept myself in a way that it's okay. Let's just, let's just embrace what you have. I felt like I was embracing life, but actually I was hustling. I was kind of trying to dodge and box, you know, like just dodge myself out through every situation and look for a situation on the outside that felt like, okay, this is fine. You know, that external validation. But it was when I went for my training, it was in the first week, I hated every bit of my life there because I was like, I'm a mom of two young kids. I thought I was coming in here for a retreat, like where I could sleep for as long as I want. I could do whatever I want. But now here I was waking up at 4 a.m. every morning, sleeping at, you know, 10, 30, 11, because we had work and assignments. I was like, I, I didn't sign up for this, but I signed up for, for studying something, for learning to, you know, design that holistic lifestyle for myself. And I didn't know it required so much of studying and, you know, so much of, you know, inner work and that whole process of cleansing, purification and learning to just find me was one of the most vulnerable, but one of the most real moments of my life. So you work with clients and, you know, a lot of the people listening are people who have gone through um, trauma, crisis, whatever your word you want to use. Um, and part of what happens is, you know, you go through treatments, you go through the process, you go through the steps, just like you're saying, like you're just going from one business to another and then it takes, it catches up with you. And ultimately you need to deal with your emotional side. 
So how would you, what would be the first thing that you would tell somebody who asked you, like, how do I embrace the chaos? What's the first thing that you would, you would suggest? The number one thing I would suggest is to just pause every time when you, uh, you know, think that, oh, this is how I wanted it to go, or you went in for one treatment or another and it didn't work for you, is if you could just allow yourself to pause and reflect within what's happening with you and see from a perception of what did I do? What did I expect it to, how did I expect it to go? And what, what can I learn from here? What is this moment trying to teach me? Because yeah. even though I'm a coach, I'm not going to tell you that go hire a coach first. No one wants to work with someone who doesn't have a clarity about where they, you know, where is it that they often slip? And if you learn to just make this pause every single time when things don't go your way, which is actually a gift in its own self, Mm -hmm. you will realize that every time you're probably falling almost in the same one or two ditches, it's the same pothole because you know, we, we, even though it may seem like we are suffering from so many problems, issues, and emotions in our life, but the core of it is that one past life trauma, that one or two most disturbing events in your life that are causing you to again and again make those, you know, same mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I've said it time and time again, uh, you know, here and in my social media that for me, Um, I needed something as big as getting cancer, getting a diagnosis. Now, my background is as a, um, I've worked in oncology for 20 years, right? So for me to get it, it was always like, I was always working on somebody else, trying to heal somebody else. And when it actually showed up on my doorstep, you know, I was scared. I was afraid. I was like, I knew what I needed to do. I kind of knew too much. Um, but at the same time now, in hindsight, I look back and I say, you know, it was a blessing for me because it had me regroup and look at what's truly important and where do I want to go with my life, right? Like, what do I want to do? What is my calling for real? Like, I thought before this traumatic event, I knew what that was. And then after the fact, it just changed my perception, and um, that's what I hear from you. Like, in, it's to really like trust and accept that where you are, even though you had a bumpy road to get there, that you'll always end up, you know, landing on your feet and, and embracing what you have. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your eight, eight week transformation method. Yeah, so, so this is really where I get to be your support. And what you get is your job, whoever is in this, you know, this eight week program does the work on themselves. And we, I get to witness and be your support and your guide. Because for me, I truly feel that I'm not here to do the healing for you. That Mm -hmm. is your job, but I'm here to provide that space. This eight week program is based on the, you know, the principles of yoga and the philosophy of yoga, because most of the time in the West, it's, you know, seen that yoga as a form of exercise, but it is not that yoga has Mm -hmm. deep roots in the ancient wisdom of how to live your life. What food should you be eating? What kind of movement is good for you? Because either we are overdoing it or we are underdoing it for ourselves. There is never a happy balance. And on a pranic level, which is the emotional level, which I found the most intriguing is through breath work, you get to access those parts of you. And you then can get to tap into what those emotions and feelings are here to tell you. And then you get to give, a, you get, get to give credit to your doubts, to your fears, because yeah. it's not like that sniper on the roof who wants to you know, take your life away from you, but rather your fear is here because it really has a message for you. It really is screaming for your attention because it wants to tell you that, hey, I'm here, I'm screaming my lungs out but listen give me that attention and then on many deeper levels you know this training works on your mind your intelligence even your subtle body like your ego because I feel that 
in order to tap into that divine, that soul, that whatever power, that divinity you believe is within you, we are, it is often covered by this three layers of subtle body, which is the ego, the mind, and the intelligence. And it takes, there are, there are three modes that every human being lives in. One is the mode of ignorance, the other is the mode of passion, and one is the mode of goodness. So all these three modes are your barriers, even the mode of goodness, believe it or not. So even if you may feel like that, oh, I'm doing everything right. I am doing eating, you know, I'm eating health plant-based diet. I am doing my affirmations. I am doing my meditation. I am doing my exercise. But then also nothing seems to work. And that is because you are living under false compassion. You are living under this false compassion towards yourself. And maybe you are on the surface level doing everything right. But deep down inside, there are still unaddressed fears and emotions that you haven't tapped into. So really, it's this program that helps you dive into all that. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. And, um, you know, it's true. I, you know, I was diagnosed at the best shape of my life. Like I knew what I needed. I was eating everything that I needed to be doing. You know, I was working out a ton. And, um, and I, you know, and I still got sick. And now I look to yoga for exactly what you said. It's, for me, it's more of a meditation practice to get within, to get into, um, to get into myself and, and where I am and where I'm standing. But you know, a lot of times, sometimes people or even um, the, you know, the teachers, the people that lead the class, have it be more of an exercise. So for people who aren't really familiar with yoga or who are struggling with finding someone who speaks to them, right? Because it's kind of like a doctor, in my opinion, or like a dentist, like you go to multiple people to try to find somebody that jives with you. Um, what is something that you suggest in finding somebody that would be good for them to work with? For themselves, like you mean when mm -hmm. they are looking, yeah. Yeah. I would always say that look for a yoga practice or any form of practice, look at someone who, who looks at it as a whole. Mm -hmm. Not someone who just teaches you the body movement. Okay, then what happens to my food? Then what happens to my emotions? Then what happens to my mindset? Mm -hmm. Because no amount of lifestyle and mindset training is going to work until and unless you are actually looking at life as a whole. And as by a whole, I mean, not just your well-being, because at the end, once since you and some of your patients might also be cancer survivors once you have crossed that bridge of curing and healing yourself you realize that it's not so much about the body and soul it's it's more it's above that it's about who we are meant to be here for the people Absolutely. for the community for this world because as much as it is about self love self care self nurturing but every person who's overcome such you know, adversities in their life come to a realization that in the end, it's really not about me. It's really not about this body. It's really not about this mind. It's about this higher purpose. And it's about staying in alignment and in flow with that. And that is what I say that through this eight week program, you learn to live into that moment. You know, you learn to mm. live into that flow state moment to moment because you develop a daily practice that will guide you to put yourself in that state of alignment. So whenever you're going to any practitioner, just look for if they have a holistic view about approaching, even though they are a doctor, there are so many doctors nowadays who found, you know, the missing link in science. And they know that, you know, that we, we need to have a holistic practice. So where, whoever you're going to, just make sure you're going to a holistic practitioner. I personally very recently had a, fourth stage can brain brain cancer you know person who i was working with coaching through my program and even though all aspects of the program helped him in so many ways to have a practice but i want to share that it wasn't a success story that he lived his that he is still living he passed away just a few weeks mm -hmm. back it wasn't a success story in that manner but it was a success story in so many ways because he 
just before he could pass away because he had the cancer in his brain, his mind wasn't as vigilant. But even before he passed away, there were so many realizations, so much of forgiving, so much of compassion, mm-hmm. empathy, and love that he needed to show towards himself and his younger self was done. Yeah, and yeah. that l- gives me the satisfaction that he l- went with a lighter heart. Yeah. He went with, with, with a more lightness and stillness in his body. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I'm a firm believer of, you know, when your time comes, your time comes. So you must live your life every day to the best and to your, your full potential. Um, and, and that's how this program came about, right? It, it's to really just let people know they're not alone and that whatever they're experiencing right now, this too shall pass. And you truly have the power within yourself to make a change for yourself. Now, there's also what you're a part of too is a book. You're a mm-hmm. part of a book, um, Women Who Boss Up. Is that correct? Right. And so you want to talk to us a little bit about how that came about and I mean, it's it's a collaborative book. It's like we are 15 other women. We have all co-authored one chapter in the book. It's basically about our stories of how we hustle to make our way to, uh, you know, design our own path basically in life. And a lot of us, in fact, most of us have gone through this journey of overcoming our limitations mentally, physically, emotionally, in every way, even the limitations of my spirit, you know, because I think that that's what bossing up for me is. It's not really about just, you know, a lot of people get triggered by the title. What do you mean by women who boss up? Is it like another feminist, uh, you know, project out there? And it is not because according to me, there is no glass ceiling. There is infinite love and, you know, hope and you know just there's so much love and potential in each one of us that it takes courage i would not you know dip, dip, you know deny that but at the same time it takes a little something more than courage a willingness from within to want to really moment to moment take the conscious decision of owning up to your life, owning up to your limitations, as well as your powers, owning up to who you are meant to be and who you are. You probably are meant to be so much more than who you are right now. But if you can't love who you are right now, even if you are having an ailment, if you can't love those parts of you, you can't love life and you can't expect to become somebody who will love that. So yeah. I just I just feel like that's bossing up. Absolutely. 100%. And that's part of what, you know, anyone who's had um, a chronic illness deals with, like, there's always some um, body image issues, confidence, you know, um, lack of motivation after a while where you're just like, why do I bother? Like, um, so I I thank you for that, because that that truly resonates with me. And I know that it'll resonate with a lot of people that until you truly, truly love yourself, and the way things are right now, um, you can't really move forward and really get to what your full potential is. So I absolutely um, adore you. I love what you are about. So how can people find you? So my website is www.wellnessbyroma.com. It's W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S by B-Y-R-O-M-A. And my Instagram is the same, Wellness by Roma. And my Facebook is Roma Bajaj Kohli. Perfect. Um, I'll make sure to uh, include those links in your bio. Um, And uh, yeah, thank you so much for today. This is exactly what we all needed to hear. And um, for everyone listening, you know what, one day at a time, one second at a time, be kind to yourself and be forgiving to yourself and, and truly love yourself. Roma, thank you so very much. Thank you, Laurie. My pleasure. Thank you.